Hey everybody, Bones here, Bones Garage, just bringing you an update, what's going on at the garage? So, this is the Rochester Quadrajet that I was rebuilding, that I showed you the last time, that was just full of junk, it was all dirty, I mean, even after the soak, it was filthy. And, um, yeah, that's what it looks like now, look at how nice that looks. It looks like it just came out of the factory, almost, it's got some wear on it, but for the most part, that is going to look beautiful on this restored car because this is the carburetor that the car came with. So we want to keep that with it because it's mated to that car. And um, how I get them so clean like this, how I get them with... Because remember, it looked like the old choke here. Everything on that carb looked like all of this stuff here. And look at it now. Look at how nice that all looks. It's not easy. After you soak it, you clean them off, and then you take these little brass brushes, and you have to use brass. You cannot use a steel brush. If you use a steel brush, you will end up scratching the crap out of this carburetor, because it's just a pot of aluminum. It's not really meant to be done like this. So I take a very soft brass brush and then you sit there and you go like this and you go like this and it takes about two three sometimes four hours it just depends but once they're done look at how nice that thing looks i mean that thing looks beautiful compared to what it was and uh, i just have the top place down on here we're still not a hundred percent finished so I'll just pull the top off and show you how nice it looks in there. Look at that. Came out beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And this is an accelerator pump. And what the accelerator pump does is it sits right here. This little chamber, this bowl right here, fills up with fuel. And when you smash on the gas pedal and you push it down real hard, that accelerator pump gets pushed down by this arm here which is pushed down by this arm here which is pushed down by your ex when you hit the accelerator pump the linkage here and the cable and blah 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 so it pushes it down it pushes a burst of fuel into the primary jets and through all of the horns for the primary barrels and that's how you get the conversion from idle to just smashing down on the pedal if you didn't have an accelerator pump you would constantly every time you pushed on the pedal even just to take off it would hesitate or stutter or could even stall if you don't have a good accelerator pump so that's what that does and then the accelerator pump not only does it have a return spring right here to push it back up once you push it down but it has a relief spring right there see how that does so as you push it down when you hit this lever and this lever pushes that pump down that pump may just create a vacuum and stick now what happens is because you're trying to push all the fuel all at once this is a relief for it so as the fuel is being used it will keep pushing the fuel into the carburetor and into your motor that's what that does so this has to be working very well for that circuit to work the next thing i want to show you is this is your float right here this is your fuel bowl right in here your needles for your secondaries which are these barrels back here if you look at it from the top of the carburetor that would be these two big barrels they sit on this little knob right there that little lever there and then there's a cam right there which as you turn it pulls this lever up which will pull these are your secondary needles and you can see how bad the shape this carburetor was in i still haven't finished it so we still got to clean those then the secondary needles will sit right in there like that as you push the pedal the secondary needles will come up the fuel will be allowed to go through there come up through these ports over here 
And then they will come up and discharge through these ports right there, as well as these ports there. So it will give you a whole lot of fuel. It, you'll, you'll watch that fuel just get sucked right into here. And that's how that works. So what happens now is you have all this fuel escaping from your fuel bowl into your primary and secondaries, barrels. This is your seat for your needle and seat. That is your needle right there. The needle hangs off the back of the float. That's your float. The needle will hang off the back. You could just barely see where it would hang off. Way down in there, that brass piece way down there. This will hang off of that, sitting in the seat like so, right there. As the float drops, the needle, and you can see the aluminum piece in there, that's the needle. The brass piece is the seat, will actually come out of the seat. And when it comes out of the seat, it allows fuel to go through those ports right there, as well as through the top of the seat. And if you see right there, you see how it has the three little fins? Those are actually just guides to keep the needle in the center of the seat. Fuel can actually flow through those guides if it is needed, if that much is needed. So as the float moves down as that float moves down there this needle will come up like this and allow the fuel to come in and as you can see on the needle there's a little rubber tip on it you can see that this one's really worn out it is old so that is how your needle seat and float work to keep the fuel bowl full it's Carburetors are really interesting. I love carburetors. I love how mechanical they are. They are just so cool. And then we have all our new choke pull-offs and our secondary pull-off for the choke and all that right here. This spring here that we re replaced was the return for the um, accelerator pump. So we replaced that. This spring here was the secondary return for the accelerator pump. And then this spring here was for the spring that keeps your needles for your primaries up in the air. And when your vacuum hits, now the way these work, these work on a vacuum. So when you first start the car up and it's just idling, it idles with about 18 inches of vacuum. And the vacuum will actually pull these down. It will, res it will overcome the resistance of the spring and pull these down and into the... Let's see if we can get it. Yeah, you can just barely see those little, that little two right there. That's a jet. The needles sit inside that jet. So as you start up, you have a lot of vacuum pulling these needles down into the jet, which limits the amount of fuel that can go through that jet. As you push on the pedal, your vacuum decreases, and it starts letting these needles come up. The further up these needles come out of the secondaries, now the needles are tapered like these secondary needles are. They're tapered. So the further it comes out of the jets, the more fuel it's going to allow to flow into your barrels, your primary barrels on this circuit. These allow the fuel to travel into your secondary circuit. So there's a whole lot that goes on with carburetors. And if I was to turn it over, actually, I have an older base plate right here. If you look on the bottom of the carburetor, now this is the bottom side. This is the side that sits on top of the motor. You'll see you have an idle circuit, that little hole. Let me get my little pokey tool. You'll see there is your idle circuit. There's your transition circuit. And the same thing on this side, an idle and a transition circuit. Fuel at idle is just flowing out of these, just flowing out. 
as you open up, as you push on the pedal, it starts opening up. Let's see if I can get in there. Those circuits, you see where that circuit is? It starts opening up to expose all of this. Once you get past that circuit, that's when the fuel starts coming through your barrels, through here. And it starts going and flowing into the motor. So you have actually three circuits on your average carburetor. You have your idle circuit, you have your primary or cruise circuit, and then you have your secondary circuit, which is wide open pedal. And those are the three circuits. Even on a two barrel, you have your idle, your primary, and then your wide open circuit. So those are the three circuits that come with carburetors. It's really cool. I love carburetors. I love working on them. I love fixing them. I love building them. It's a science all within itself. So there you go, guys. I know this is a long video. I'm probably going to break it up into two parts. I'll talk to you soon. Have fun. Okay, bye.